Here we're going to demonstrate how to use Excel to find areas below the normal curve. There's no nice tidy formula to compute areas below the normal curve, so we have to rely upon something like Excel or tables or some other piece of software in order to do this. Now the first part, the problem just asks, what proportion of values of Z are uh, less than minus 0.72? Okay, so now it's a good idea to draw a picture on all these kinds of problems. So just a quick sketch of a normal curve. It doesn't have to be very good. Now we're talking standard normal here. I usually kind of label a Z here to remind myself that it's standard normal. So we're interested in the proportion of areas less than negative 0.72. So maybe that's about right there. And we want to know the area of this shaded region. So the areas below the curve translate into proportions of values uh, satisfying some particular value. So this is the part where we need Excel to help out, to f tell us, okay, what is the area below the graph uh, from negative 7.72 on the upper end down to, well, in principle, uh, minus infinity. It goes on forever uh, in the negative direction. All right, so if we bring up Excel, uh, there's a built-in function called norms disk. We'll go ahead and make sure we've got the cell highlighted. It's just equals, and it's N-O-R-M, thick normal, the S stands for standard, and then DIST for distribution. And then you just give it a single Z value. Okay, in our case it's minus 0 0.72. Now what norms disk does is it will tell us the area below the curve of the normal distribution from negative infinity all the way up to whatever value we put in here, so minus 0.72. So norms disk tells us exactly what we're looking for here. So if we hit equals in this case, it's what? Uh, about 20.2357, about 23.5%. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down. And in almost all cases, this degree of accuracy will be enough. Three or four decimal places should be enough to make the web work system happy. Okay, well, let's move on to the second question then. The second one asks, uh, what's the proportion of Z values that are greater than 1.31? So now the picture looks like this. Again, we have our normal curve, it's zero. This is all standard normal, so Z. And 1.31 is maybe about right here. You don't have to get the scale perfect, it's just kind of the relative positions of things that matter. We want that area, right? Z is greater than this now. Well, the thing is is that norms disk can only tell us areas to the left of values, right? So we can use norms disk to tell us this area here. So that area equals norms disk of 1.31. Well that's actually almost enough because the other fact we can exploit is that the total area below the curve, this is a density curve, so the total area below this curve has to equal 1. So the area we want, right, that part there is just 1 minus whatever this number is right here. Okay, so our area then one minus norms dist of 1.31. Okay, so we can bring Excel back up and actually do that calculation. And let's see, if we put an equal sign here and then say 1 minus norms dist 1.31 like that, that should work. Just hit enter 0 0.0951. By the way, you can always, as you're doing this for homework, you can always take values in here and copy them and then paste them right into web work and that way you get lots of decimal places of accuracy. Okay, 0 0.0951. All right. All right, there's the second one. Now the last one is sort of a combination of the first two, right? We want to know the proportion of values between 0.5 and 1.79. So now our picture looks like this. Again, standard normal, here's zero. Oh, 0.5 is maybe about here. 
1.79 is over here. And we want the area in between those two, right? That's going to correspond to the proportion of values that land in between those two numbers. So remember, norms dist only tells us values of areas to the left of numbers. So what we can do is just start by saying, all right, well, why not take everything to the left of 1.79? first, so that's going to give us all this area here, and then we're going to subtract off all the stuff that's to the left of 0.5. Like that. And that's this area right here. So what's left is exactly what we want. That region. Alright, what do we get? Well, I mean, if we go to Excel, norms dist of 1.79 minus norms dist of 0.5 and it's what a little over 27 percent 2718 all the problems involving the normal distribution are going to ultimately distill down into one of these three cases. You need the area to the left of something, to the right of something, or in between two values. And this shows exactly how you would go about finding all, any of those. Okay, last step then is uh, a little bit of the opposite. It says determine the value of z that is the 65th percentile. Okay, now what does that actually mean? Well, okay, let's draw a picture. It's easier to get a sense of it this way. So here's z. Here's zero. And what we want to know is the 65th percentile means that 65% of values are less than the number we've got. Well, we know that zero is the 50th percentile for standard, standard normal, right? Half the area is this way and half is to the right. So the 65th percentile has got to be up here somewhere, like this. So the question is, suppose we know this area over here is 0.65. What's the corresponding value of z? Now, this is the opposite of what we knew before, right? In the previous cases, we knew z and we wanted the area. Now we've got the area and we want to know the corresponding z. So we kind of need the reverse of what norms dist does, right? You could give norms dist, you'd give it z values and it gives areas back. We need a function that takes areas and gives z values back. Well, there is such a thing, it's called norms inv. The i and v stands for inverse. Okay, so this is actually going to be equal to norms i n v of 0.65. Okay, and just by based upon our picture, we can see it ought to be a positive number. So let's pull up Excel and see what it says. Norms inv and 0.65. Enter. And sure enough, we do get a positive number, right about 0.3853. And there we have it.